So you actually ended up going home early from deployment. Yep. And because you had another kid on the way. Yep. Gunner. He um and, and the thing is is it's like, God, I mean hindsight's twenty twenty, man. You know, when when man, when this stuff goes like this, um m- we had pl- we knew that that was going to be the end of the deployment. And so I was like, all right, cool. You know, you just go back with the, with the Advon for the redeploy. And so that was all part of the plan um, from day one, basically. All right, cool. Um, because my first son had been born on my last deployment. So as it was, and, and by the way, so start heading back. Wife gives birth early anyway. So there you go. Two deployments, two kids, not there. Common story for a lot of military guys. Um, but for people who are not, you know, I mean, imagine like you're not being there for your for either of your kids. My wife, she's a trooper, but she was running out of steam. Um, so it was cool to be able to go back and at least try to be there. Uh, but Gunner's always been in a hurry, so he came early. Um, and then, so yeah, went back, um, start handling the redeploy. And so by that he means we're some guy comes home from deployment a little bit early to start basically preparing for us to come home getting ready for all the administrative stuff that's going to take place and andrew was that guy and there was making a, that happened and then there was like three other guys that like a week later came and yep. followed me too so okay. it was it was you know near the end but a tough but a tough call anyway and then um i mean i remember where i was when when i got the word so you know i was back at the team and uh, i was i was actually chatting with delta platoon commander um via a method that we use and he uh, I, so i knew they were going out and um and i mean i distinctly remember going all right man get some get some for me you know and uh so i was home i got the call at like twelve thirty at night um our time local and uh so i knew right away that it was one of our guys uh, they wouldn't, you know, nothing over the, you know, over the phone specifically, but I knew because I had just talked to our guys, you know, and I was like, God almighty. So I, I raced into, so um, you get the call that just says come to work. Yep. Get to work. And I'm like, all right. So, and admittedly, I'm a little frantic, you know, because these are my brothers, you know, and I'm not there. That's really hard. So. You know, you can have some survivor's guilt over that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, um, uh, you know what seems like, hey, look, we got this. Deployment's basically over. Um, and go back thinking you're making a right decision, trying to balance stuff with your family. Um, and then for that to happen, to, uh, and, you know, he's one of my guys. He's one of my guys. And I wasn't there. And uh, that's hard. Um you know, it's been almost 10 years now, and time helps to heal those kinds of things. But I had a lot of guilt over that. And um, so anyway, we kind of figure out what's going on. Um, I get the brief and figure out who it is. So um, start figuring out, okay, so now it's now it's a race for those of you guys that don't know. I mean, look, here's the thing. We live in a 24-7 news world, um, and it's a race to notify the family before they find out through some other means. And uh, he, you know, lives up in Orange County, so we start assembling a team. Um, and, you know, admirals and uh, commodores are involved. And, uh, it look, this is the second guy. We have not lost SEALs in Iraq to this point, Mark and Mike now. So, um, uh, you know, so who's going to go up and do the notification? And, I mean, like, I had to, like, dig my heels in. I was like, listen, this is my guy. I'm going. And it was at first like, and then I was like, no, 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 I'm going. And thank God I did that because, I mean, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Um, we're racing. We put, put the guys together, throw the blues on. We're driving up. And, um, you know, look, when we, when we got to Mikey's family's house, um, you know, look, it, all they wanted was to talk to somebody who knew Mikey. And the other four guys that were standing there didn't know him, didn't serve with him, didn't work up with him, didn't deploy with him. And, you know, in this grand scheme of God's plan, I have to ask, you know, we pulled over before pulling up, the, uh, pulling up to the house and put on our blues, and I literally thought to myself, okay, th- we are about to give the worst possible news to a, to a parent that their kid is dead. And um, I remember thinking, you know, God, just use me right now. 
I don't know why I'm here in this timing, um, but just work work through me. Just use me, you know. Uh, so, you know, we knocked on their door, and, and um, you know, Mrs. Monsoor looked out, and she later knew, you know, that we, I mean, she took a few minutes to get to the door. She looked out and saw five men standing there in blues. Um, so that was very hard. You know, you go in, and obviously the family is upset, and you're doing the best you can to keep it together. I mean, for me, this was my guy. This was my brother. And I'm standing there giving them the news and trying to keep it together myself. And, um, you know, they, the good news is is that one by one they sort of looked around and said, well, did anybody know Mikey? And I was like, yeah, I knew Mikey. He was mine. And uh, so they, you know, politely asked everybody to leave uh, but wanted me to stay and just talk about the deployment, tell stories about Mikey, what he was like, what was going on. And, you know, I want to, uh, the Monsors are an unbelievable family, and I totally want to respect their privacy, their Absolutely. private family. Um, and they're just, they've just been so amazingly humble and gracious through this whole thing, and I just don't want to sit here and tell stories about, th- about this. Right. I don't want to do it. Um, one of the things that are, the, the the only the only thing I'll I'll say about this again, out of just respect for the Monsoor family, um, is when, when you just said about about um, you telling them what deployment was like. Well, in talking to them, one of the things that they said was their impression of the deployment. So so like I said, and you guys have heard stories about Ramadi and you can go and you can go on YouTube and just put Ramadi two thousand six yeah. and you'll see what Ramadi was like. That's what Ramadi was like. And it was incredibly violent and crazy. And these guys, Charlie and Delta Platoon, were in the thick of it. In the thick of it. On an almost daily basis. And the reason I'm building that up is because the emails that Mikey had sent <laughs> home to his family were, oh, yeah, having fun. Not much going on here. Right. Don't worry about me. We're just training some Iraqis. Don't worry about me. Oh, we're just, we're just uh, trying to work on the infrastructure. Don't worry about me. It's all good here. I'll be home in a little bit. Th- those right. are the kind of emails that he was sending home in order to make sure that his family wasn't worried about him. Right. And it, it shows you what kind of a guy that Mikey was. Um, so, so any, is there anything else again without, without going into your personal, you know, your personal interactions with this incredible family that you want to say, and maybe from the perspective of as much as I hate to say this, there's going to be other people that are going to do this job being this person that does the notification is there anything else that you could give advice to people that have to do this job or you know if they if that ever befalls people that are you know, we get a lot Andrew we get a lot of big a lot of military guys that that reach out to me all the time that are active duty that are doing yep. work and anything that strikes you as something that you learned from this experience here's what I learned is the worst thing I've ever done in my life and the worst thing and combat itself was a piece of cake compared to this. I would love to go back to combat. Any issues or concerns or anything from my military service was completely centered around this. It is an extremely heavy burden to bear. So if you are ever in this position, I don't have any good advice for you. There's nothing you can do to prepare yourself for that, this type of situation. The only thing I could tell you is reach out to guys who have done it before. I will gladly talk you through it because one of the best salves that I've found for this kind of pain is hanging out with your brothers and spending time with them. Um, I will always have time for someone who's had to be a Keiko, always. Call me. Let's go out. Let's hang out. I won't suggest drinking a beer, but if a beer is what you want to do, we'll do it. Um, But the bottom line is, is that just the intimacy of being around another guy who's been there is very comforting. And so, you know, when you go through a stressful situation like this, do not isolate yourself. 
there are other guys who have been through this and um and a true brother will be will be willing to take the time for you i'll find the time for you no matter what no matter how busy i am and so um i just want to be a resource now i know that there's only so many hours in the day but if you're going through something if you've gone through something like this reach out to your brothers find a connection to another military guy because nobody can understand it like another military guy and that's part of the stress of it part of the stress of it is is that you don't feel like you can possibly explain what you're dealing with to anybody else there's no way they could possibly understand and comprehend it but another guy who's been to combat can and we can sit in the room next to each other even if we sat there and said nothing we would get each other and so you got to reach out to each other do not isolate that's that's great advice and actually one thing that's very interesting to me is that I get emails from guys and they're basically doing that they're gonna do that right now with us there's yep. some of those guys out there that are that are going okay yeah and and the message is yeah I mean the military guys that have been through this kind of stuff before again I was never Keiko I never even came home for my guys you know that was another kind of another kind of misery I guess to just know you're just sending people home it's awful um, but yeah don't isolate yourself talk to your brothers find them and tell them what you're thinking about yeah and and this is awesome, right? Because Twitter and Facebook and messages like this, you know, we can kind of reconnect, you know. We can kind of talk about doing some cool stuff together, whether it's jujitsu or running a badass race or doing something to challenge you physically or mentally. We all can kind of give ourselves a electronic high five, you know, through something badass you're still doing today. And you know what? Here's the other thing too, transition, man. Ooh, man. So 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 we so that happens. I'm home and in February 2007, I get off active duty. And I so, so for those of you that aren't tracking the calendar here, Mikey died September 29th, 2006. That whole thing unfolds. We got home. I got home. I was the last with the last group to leave, and we left uh, Ramadi October 21st. Took us a couple days to get home, but now we're home. We get post deployment leave. We reassemble. We do post deployment kind of debrief type stuff. Then we get post deployment leave. So now you're talking. It's December. All of a sudden, December. You know, October. It's November. It's now. It's December, Thanksgiving. Now all of a sudden, it's December. Boom. And so not much time has gone by. It's been packed. And February, you're getting out of the I'm Navy. I'm gone. And that war machine keeps cranking. By the way, so the guys are back. They're ready to do another platoon. They're doing pre deployment work. Whatever, dude. Whatever. It just it keeps on cranking. 